welcome to episode 23 of Strawberry Patches podcast. My name is Norina. Welcome to my vlog or podcast about knitting, sewing, making handmade dolls and life in New Zealand. Very happy that you could join me. Today I will tell you all about my baby knits and some news from my life. And I just wanted to share, to share with you this beautiful tree, which is called Pahatukawa. It's a very New Zealand tree and it's the season. They say it's a Christmas season and they this beautiful red flowers can be seen all throughout until Christmas. And this tree is just gorgeous. So grab something tasty. And let's start. And I mean a drink. <laughs> Get a drink and let's start. Hi everybody. Let's start. I wanted to show you so many things that I have started making since last time I finished lots of things. And yes, I've been sewing a lot as much as I've been knitting. And I have finished these, which I decided to call spring blossom socks. Why? Because I dyed this yarn and now that the weather is so much nicer and warmer these remind me of some flowers so here we go very speckly yarn one of my first attempts at uh, hand dyeing yarn and these two were very easy to do and actually I started a new pair which is almost done as well. So I'm taking them with me to the hospital because what I've heard is that women who are giving birth or who have given birth have always cold feet. That goes in the bag. Another thing I've finished is, if you remember this little angel, I don't know if I showed you before but and it's got this 2019 and New Zealand at, on the wings and the idea is that at some point we will have this big Christmas tree and I will have all these little toys that I made in different countries before different New Year's and I will hang them there and remember oh this one I made in Bali, this one I made in Istanbul, this one I made in New Zealand, who knows where we will be next year. So far, it will be third year that I will be in a different country. Just wanted to show you the beautiful hair that my friend Sarah hand spun and dyed. Very happy with how this turned out. I also started knit, uh, sewing finally on my sewing machine. And I made these two pouches that I meant to do ages ago. Um, <laughs> not very proud of the insides <laughs> because uh, yeah but they're for me so and I really had hard time figuring out why my needles broke and why it was basically the tension a little bit better on this one and I love the fabric it reminds me of all these um, sarafans which are these Russian traditional um, costume that one might see. Although this fabric is made in Japan, funny enough. But it's a very, very nice cosmetics pouch that I can use normally. I use it for carrying makeup or uh, some sewing stuff with me. Like if I was making another toy, I would have it inside with needles and buttons and everything. So these are my four finished objects. Now let's go to unfinished or whips. As I said, I started another pair of socks and they are made of this crazy yarn that I bought uh, from Nana Cindy Yarns during the wool fest that we had here. And this is how it pulled. I have to say that I'm very happy with uh, this colors. They pulled so beautifully and this pink and white and everything. 
but the red just reminds me of Halloween blood and everything. I don't know. It looked so beautiful on the skein, but I'm not very uh, crazy about how it looks in the sock. That's why it is just a sock. At first I wanted to make a cardigan, a baby cardigan with it, because I thought it would be fun colors, but when I started, I just didn't want to see my baby in this kind of colors. Just looks a bit, I don't know, crazy. And one is done, another one is on the way. Almost there. I'm knitting it on my grandma's needles, which are 1.75 millimeter needles. And here's how much I have left. I'm pretty sure I have enough. This is a four ply and it's a super wash yarn. It's perfect for socks. Another thing I'm working on and I'm very excited and I really want to finish before this little bump is born. It's a doll that um, I had this idea for a while and I wanted to show you before I'm done. I wanted to record this episode to kind of so that you can see the process. And what I did was first I drew the outline of the doll on this fabric, which I always use for um, the body and parts like face, hands and whatever body parts the doll would be seen. And then I didn't want to cut it. Normally I cut it right away and then I make the doll and then I sew everything. But there was so many details here that I wanted to stitch and I didn't want there to be any visible, you know, knots or anything. That's why I am stitching them now. And I decided that I don't want to experiment with any more fabric. Now, basically, I didn't really know how to make the dress. I mean, I could have done, like, attach one more fabric, then sew it and then cut it out. But I decided to try acrylic paints and stitching. So just now almost finished the face. Next thing I will do is I will embroider the baby. A little baby in there. As you can understand, it's a pregnant doll. And uh, I'm still pregnant, so I really want to finish it now because we have only 11 days until the due date. After that, I'm going to cut around with seam allowance and turn them face down or face touching two faces touching and just seam around turn it put the fit the filling in and here i plan to also on top of it already stitch like the outline of the arms and the legs here and right here there are some angel bodies i don't know if you can see but you will see when they're done. Yeah. I really love it when I get a chance to work on the eyes. And to be honest, there are... I wonder if you can see how many colors I have here. So it's light brown, brown, white, black, and green colors for the eyes. And uh, here's the back. It can be pretty scary, huh? But um, I'm quite excited to see what's going to happen and how it will turn out. And hopefully it will be done sometime this week. This... Oh, this is not all. I have some other works in progress. almost forgot. So remember that yarn that I hand spun with some Stalina? This is 100% Merino that I bought at the fair. It was lovely fleece with had this um, unicorn colors and I thought, I didn't know yet if I was having a boy or a girl. So I thought this colors could match either. And I'm making this lovely cardigan. I figured this to be a worsted weight, although it's not even but I'm following the pattern 
that is written for worsted weight and I think it's turned out fine. Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to block it and everything. And there are buttons going from the neckline all the way down on one side. It's hard to tell right now, but um, here we go. Something like that. There was a version with shorter sleeves, but I thought that since the fabric is quite thick, uh, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't make any point of making it short sleeved because it is obviously a very warm cardigan. I'm excited how it will turn out, and I've started looking for the buttons. And I don't, I've made 10 holes here, which is a bit too much, but whatever. And very soon I will put the buttons in. Another thing that I started is um, this wonderful shawl that many of you know and heard about. It's by Andrea Murray, and it's called find your fate and I had a little talk chat with my friends from the knitting group and they were very nice and they suggested that I use that yarn that I showed you last time from the alpaca farm um, to make find your fate because what it did was coming from one shade gradually fading into another so I started and here is the beginning that I frogged and I thought, oh no, I don't really like the colors, how they look. So I decided to skip the pink part and I cast on again with this denim color. And I must say that this pattern is really nice. It's really easy to follow and I kind of well after frogging it once probably that's why I it was easy to remember what to do and I'm almost at the point where I need to put in the second color but I don't know maybe it's the weather or something or the yarn that is so thick I just felt I don't know out of love <laughs> I don't know. I bet it happens with everyone at some point, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, I don't know how I will do it. But really, right now it's really hot anyway. So I'm more keen on working with um, lighter yarns or with sewing or stitching actually and some gardening. I have a little garden with some strawberries, which I never get to eat because those birds, they get there before. There was this strawberry, which was pink and on the tip it was red. And I was like, yes, tomorrow I'll have it. Before tomorrow started, I'm looking at it. They ate half of the strawberry that was red and the other half was still green. Uh, yeah. I love watching them. I love seeing those birds there, but so yeah, that's what I do when I'm not knitting and I'm not sewing. I try to grow some radish and strawberries and some salad. And um, if I didn't have this belly, then I probably would do some more. But for those of you who are not interested in seeing it, <laughs> turn away. But look at that. This is 38 weeks and uh, one, two, three days. And we, we are ready. I've got exciting news. I passed my driving test. So now um, I'm driving that beauty that stands there in our carport. It's, um, it's so cool to be finally mobile and to be able to go wherever you want. Like before I would it would take me one hour to get to the shopping mall and I would always say, oh, no, two buses and all that hustle. And now I can just jump in the car and go in 15 minutes, I'm there. So it's very exciting. Although it wasn't an easy test. It was really, it was raining and <laughs> it 
Anyways, I'm happy I did it because I will definitely need it when the baby's here. So yeah, uh, another news that I wanted to share with you. I started a Russian vlog, which is going to be the same kind of, but in my native tongue because my family were complaining that they can't understand what I'm saying. And I thought, well, you know, why not? Because maybe somebody out there is interested in what life is like in New Zealand uh, from a Russian person's perspective. And uh, I know there are many other people who knit and talk about their things and share um, their ideas on different yarns and I don't really think there are any other Russian knitters that have a vlog. So I thought, why not share? Maybe there'll be somebody interested. So this is all guys. Um, I don't have much more to say other than I wanted to... Oh, one thing. Yeah. Um, I wanted to show you at the end of this video um my favorite shop again i know i've showed it before but still it's the new zealand fabrics and yarn and uh i just love hanging out there with my knitting group every wednesday and you can see all the beautiful yarns and fabrics and my dolls there as well so before i do that i want to show you some of the fabrics that i bought and I'm planning oops, to make some either dolls or actually this will be a project bag. I really, really, really want to make a project bag. And this is a Pahatukawa, which is this New Zealand um, tree that is in full blossom right now. And here are some New Zealand birds. Very, very cute. I think this one this is the kiwi um this is tui and the rest i don't want to say because i might be wrong and <laughs> i don't want to give you wrong information so yeah thank you very much for joining me this is a short episode i hope you liked it I think I'll see you in a while because very soon I will be probably too busy to make any videos. But I hope you are enjoying your crafty projects and I hope to see you very soon. Thanks for watching and see you. Bye. Where's the sock matician yarn? Is it gonna share? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have the limited edition uh, Nathan Taylor's um, collaboration yarn, the sock matician edition. So we'll start with uh, Storm Delivery. So all the names and uh, the surnames of an HIV pioneer or LBG activist. So this one here, the nice dark shade, is Storm Deliver Delivery. And Storm was a drag king that was harassed by the police. And one day when they were taking her away and putting her in a paddy wagon and beating her up, she turned to the crowd and said, what? why don't you do something? And everyone did. So that was a real uh, landmark moment and the LGB um, activist that, it, you know, we're all together, we're all people, we've got to stand up for each other and we're not different, we're, we're people. So there's that one. Then um, Harvey Milk, uh, he was a, an American politician and that's the milk. 
Mm. And he was assassinated because of his, um, yeah, because of who he was. Uh, then we had um, Gilbert. Uh, oh, that's Baker. lovely. Gilbert was the inventor oh. of the, the rainbow flag. Uh huh. Um, the six colours. Uh, then we have Jane Burton. Now, Jane Burton did some amazing work at the beginning of um, uh, when people were starting to be diagnosed with HIV, they were treated like lepers. And she took a humanitarian approach being a nurse and she changed the care of um, HIV sufferers. So something more humane and uh, along with the help of Princess Diana. Mm. Then we have uh, Lynn Featherston. She oh, is a peer of the realm. So beautiful. Who first brought up in, into the English Parliament about same-sex marriage and she actually uh, was at um, Nathan's wedding. Then we have Garland, named after Judy Garland, and uh, she didn't really realise it, but she was um, an LBG activist. A lot of people would say, you know, uh, refer to um, gay people as friend of Dorothy. Um, she, you know, I mean, you follow the air brick road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have Dr. Chapel. Now, Dr. Chapel, um, very compassionately, uh, diagnosed um, Nathan with HIV and so this one is dedicated to him. This one here is another HIV um, activist, uh, Luke Montaigne. He um, received an, um, a Nobel Prize for his work with actually discovering what HIV was. Mm. So this is Nathan's dark rainbow. Ah. So there is a dark history to the, the LBG movement. I've learnt quite a lot from from what yeah. he shared with us. So I've been able to share that with with my customers. Yeah, and it's that's beautiful. I think it is a great inspiration for many people. Yeah, and it's helped people already. Mm. You know, just just sharing our story is so important. Yeah. And I loved your episode, and uh, yeah, I think everybody should watch it. I'll put the link. Oh, well, I was crying the whole yeah. It was really hard. It was really hard. Yeah. Hard to do. That's why it's taken me so long. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But thank you for sharing. Okay. <laughs> Thanks.